episode of Share the Chalk, a basketball webcast designed with the intention to give coaches and players a platform to share their knowledge. Today, we dive into skill development and individual workouts from a player perspective, and we're thrilled to welcome on someone who spent the past four years helping to turn a program into a national powerhouse, someone who's broken countless records and received numerous awards, and most recently was selected as the number one pick in the WNBA draft. To me, the one thing that really stands out about this individual, though, is her character. She truly is a great person and spends a lot of her time focused on what, how to inspire and how to help other people. With that, we are excited to welcome on Sabrina Ionescu from the University of Oregon and newest member of the New York Liberty. How are we doing today, Sabrina? Thanks for coming on. Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm doing great. Um, we're excited to have you in to talk about skill development. I want to start with uh, where your love for the game came from and where your journey started from a skill development standpoint. I would say it started when I was really young. I was probably four or five years old. I had two brothers and you know, they always went out and played. And so we really started at a young age outside playing basically on any hoop that we can find, whether it was in our front yard or at the park. And so we didn't, you know, I didn't really grow up with trainers or with a lot of basketball coaches at a really young age, I just went out and played and competed against anybody that really came to the park and played and kind of just grew my game from there. What kinds of things were you doing early on to, to help your skill development? And, uh, you know, when did you really start to get into specific skill development type drills to help you improve as a player? I started probably when I was in elementary school to do a lot of like ball handling stuff. Um, because if my brothers were playing video games, I went outside and I could just, I took the garbage out dribbling. I was just able to, you know, go outside the front, uh, in the front yard and just use a bunch of things around the house to, to do dribbling drills. So that's really what I started doing. Um, I'd also find targets on the house somewhere to pass. And I started like finding random objects to try and, and throw one-handed passes to, two-handed passes to, and try to hit, hit them. And so it probably started when I was in elementary school. Um, into middle school where I started like doing dribbling drills trying to like work on my left hand finding ways to finish around the basket uh, because I wasn't strong enough to shoot from really far yet. Take us through one of your one of your workouts you know what what kinds of things are you doing what types of drills are you doing now what are you focused on when you go into your workouts? Uh, now I, I really do I really have the same like core routine every single time I shoot um, from five spots 15 footers, um, spot shots. And then from there, I'll do one dribble pull-ups right, one dribble pull-ups left from all five spots. And then from there, I'll move back into spot three-point shots. And then it depending on if it's before a game or, or what's going on, that's when I kind of start moving from lifts in the corner to drifts in the corner to coming off pick and rolls. The defender goes under, you pull back, shoot threes. Um, I'll do NBA threes. Um, so really just working on a lot of movement off off the move, whether it's dribbling or just passing and receiving the ball back off the move. And then to finish it, I always finish with floaters um, all around the basket, right hand, left hand, same foot, opposite foot, um, both feet, jump stop, floaters, um, and then just a lot of finishes around the basket. And then free throws are always integrated in there. I hear you. I hear you talking about a lot of game movements. Um, you know, I, I assume that that's kind of one of the non-negotiables for you when you go into a workout is making sure that you are doing game movements all the time. Um, you know, I've seen you work out. I know you're always going to game speed. Talk about the importance of doing game movement actions as well as game speed actions for you. It's huge. I mean, you know, I, I don't think I realized it until I would practice over and over spot shots at a slow pace. And then you, I got into the games where I was realizing that I wasn't given that same amount of time to shoot and my shots would feel rushed and, you know, I wasn't going in at the percentage I wanted it to. And so that's when I realized that I needed to practice at a much higher um, percentage, meaning like getting my shot off way, way faster than, than I used to. So I really changed the way I started to practice to where everything was game speed and I really shortened the amount of time that I was working out so instead of going game speed for two three hours at a time which gets really tiring and can kind of take a toll on your body I would just go really really hard for 45 minutes to an hour of just full-on game speed pull-ups game speed um, all three point shots as soon as I was catching it it was going up it was it was going up really fast and so that really helped me 
when I started playing and wasn't given that much space to shoot, I was already accustomed to having to get my shot up in less than a second in all of those categories, whether it was floaters or pull-ups or uh, three-point shots. I would guess that your your workouts and your routine has has changed and evolved um, over the course of your career from you know middle school to high school to college and now as you enter the WNBA. What would you say to um, you know young players, middle school, high school? Um, what would you say to them in terms of the importance and of, of their workouts and what kinds of things you would suggest them doing while working out at that age? I would definitely say to become a good shooter you need to become really good around the basket and so I think a lot of times people don't really pay attention to working on floaters working on mid-range shots really just working on touches around the basket and that really really helps your outside game and, and just having kind of that muscle memory to be able to shoot and so I think working outside in and then usually I work out or inside out excuse me and then when I finish I do the same thing I, I work outside in so I think if you can become very good with touches around the rim and just being confident to finish off different feet and at different angles off the backboard, um, it's going to help you become a better shooter and, and really just have multiple threats. If someone wants to run you off the line, you're, you're just as comfortable to be able to finish in, tra in transition, to be able to finish in traffic, to be able to finish you know, with, with who's ever there. I want to talk a little bit about your mental approach. Um, you know, you're a, an extremely competitive person, and, and I know that your mind is always going a million miles a, of an hour trying to figure out what to do to be the best you can be. You know, what is your mental approach when going into a workout? What types of things are you focused on? What are you visualizing? And, and how important is having a great imagination to being a great person or to being a great player? Yeah, I mean, it's it's huge. Like when I'm practicing and when I'm you know, out there in envisioning players, I'm, I'm envisioning really just scenarios. I'm not going out there like there's no one out there. A lot of the time, every time I'm shooting, every time I'm coming off of a drift, I'm fading to the corner. It's, it's like I, I envision the defense there. I envision the shot going in because, you know, you never want to envision you missing um, or else you miss really before you even shoot it. But I would just say that that's what I really am trying to envision like live scenario game situations while I'm practicing. So then when I'm in a game, I'm never kind of caught by surprise or unprepared. Um, so in every drill that I do, um, you know, I always know how many I've missed. I always know how many I make and I really keep track of, all right, well, I went 18 for 20 the day before. Now that's what I have to go, you know, for, or even better today. And if not, then it's like, I didn't do as well. Why, why am I missing these shots? Why am I short? All right. My legs are tired or I'm not using my legs or if I'm not focused. And so I think really just being dialed in during that time that you're in there and figuring out what you're trying to accomplish, but also just setting like a standard and a level of excellence every time you work out. Um, because if you're just going out there to shoot and you're not really mentally prepared and mentally focused, it's kind of just meaningless. I hear you talking about competition. You know, you talk about, you know, setting those goals. How important is, how important in your opinion is, is setting that, those goals and having competition inter intertwined in your workouts? It's huge. I mean, every single drill that I do, it's, I count exactly how many I make, how many I miss, and it's always a competition with myself. Um, so like, for example, today I was shooting NBA threes and I like went 27 for 28. And yesterday I went, the same thing 27 for 28 and I knew like I was trying to beat 27 because that's like you know 20 I hit 27 in a row and I was trying so hard to get over that to get to 28 29 and so I think just having that competition with yourself of always wanting to be better but really just being dialed in on all right what did I do the day before what did I do today it really helps to just kind of have that competitive drive in your workouts what are some of the things that you've learned from the, you know, you've had the opportunity to be around a lot of great players. What are some things that you've learned from some of the best players that you've been around and, and what separated them from other players? I would just say the work and the attention to detail that they really put in, um, especially working out with Kobe over the summer. I mean, he, he, his attention to detail, it was as simple as how you pivot off of your foot and what, where you put the pressure on your foot when you explode and at what angles the defense is closing out on you to know to attack. And so it's really like these small attention to details that set 
apart the good from the great. And so really just being dialed in and, and tuned into um, exactly what I'm doing, what I'm trying to accomplish. But, you know, and, and obviously work ethic. I mean, a lot of those great players work a lot harder and a lot smarter and, and a lot more than the average player. And so just being able to see that firsthand is motivating for me and kind of puts into perspective how, how you should be working. And sometimes being in the gym for four or five hours is great. But if you're not dialed in, if you're not doing the right things, it could be meaningless as well. You've played for a lot of great coaches. Um, what are some things that the coaches that you've had the opportunity to play for done to help you continue to develop your game? Uh, I mean, really just paying attention and valuing player development. We do player development skill breakdown before every single practice for as long as I've been in college for these four years. And so there's about a 30 minute slot at the beginning of every practice to get break, guard breakdown and post breakdown and to just be able to come off pick and rolls and, you know, when the defense is helping how to kick out and make the extra pass and really just breaking down what you see in a game I think has helped us but it also just becomes kind of this muscle memory like you know what to do when someone goes under you know what to do when someone goes over and the options that you have and obviously practice is just as important as a game is and I've been blessed to have a coach that really values that and and that's you know kind of his core belief like we work just as hard in practice as a game and no matter who you play against you know it's it's not guaranteed you go out there and you play really hard and you play the right way and so I've been able to to kind of have that in my DNA before, but also continue to work on it and, and value it through college. What does success look like to you? I would say it's being the best that you can um, and, and really leaving nothing, nothing out there. I know, you know, a lot of the times you want to win so badly, but there's so many things that you could also learn from losing. And, and as long as, you're being the best and as long as you're doing everything you can from preparation to performance to rehab stuff and and recovery as as long as you're being everything that you can to to try and be your best then you're being successful what books uh, or podcasts um, have have helped you in just your development as a player as a person Um, what books or podcasts have been helpful to you um, I read all of the John Wooden books. So I, I've read a lot of John Wooden just because of the values that he has in team, also just individual and in preparation. Um, I've read Relentless by Tim Grover, which was really, really good as well. Um, it just kind of talks about the mental side of things and how important that is. Um, and then, I mean, I've read all of Kobe's books and I'm in the middle of reading his Wizard series books, which talks about a lot of different sports. I'm on the basketball one right now, but just really talks about the, exactly the same thing, mental preparation, how hard you have to work and how really success starts in what you believe in and, you're, and in the mind. So I think all of those books have been great to just learn from and kind of see through a different lens. As you get ready here to transition um, into a new stage of your career, what are you most looking forward to Um, as you get into this next stage of your career? I think just kind of seeing a different level of basketball being played and obviously at a, at a higher level. And so having to just watch more film, having to evolve my game to a completely different level is exciting. And obviously it's not going to be easy. It's going to be harder than it was in college. And so I think just getting excited about the fact that I'm going to have to learn a lot more about basketball and I'm going to have to learn Um, ways to continue to get better and obviously what I've done was enough in college but it's not enough at the next level so just continuing to grow on and off the court through through um, the league this last question um, it's an open-ended question Um, for you when looking at your career looking at your life it all comes down to what Uh, I'd say how you impact others around you Um, you know it's it's really not about how many wins and losses it's not really about the points that you score I would really just say the influence and the impact you have on on those around you and obviously for me I'm it's those little girls and little boys that come to the game that you might inspire that you know you might um that they might see something in you that that they want to see in themselves and you really you know drive them to want to start playing a sport or really just give them confidence to do anything that they dream of and so I would definitely say that that's really what's important, not necessarily the scoreboard or or how many points you score at the end of the day. 
Well, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to shed a little light on uh, individual skill development from a player standpoint. Um, we wish you the best of luck. We're looking forward to watching your career as it continues to unfold um, in the WNBA. And uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the time, Sabrina. Thank you. Thanks for having me.